Another deflection problem handled nicely by superposition is the one shown, and it asks for what value of m, applied external moment, will the beam have such that a zero slope is present at the free end? All right, not zero deflection, but zero slope. So this is a determinant structure. We've got three external supports. It's a simple cantilever. So we're going to use determinant superposition. So I take my structure and I'm going to add one load onto this one. That's obviously the load of two kips per foot over 10 feet. The beam is 20 feet long. My structure two is going to be the exact same beam, the 20 foot beam. And on the end of that one is the purple M, the unknown applied external load. So what we need is the slope at the end. So superposition tells me that anything in the actual is going to equal structure one plus structure two. And so the thing that we're going to zero in on is slope at the free end. And we'll put a coordinate system on here. So there's our x. So this would tell me that the slope, which is the first derivative of v with respect to x in the actual at 20, has to equal the slope in structure 1 evaluated at 20 plus the slope in structure 2 evaluated at 20. And we know that this is going to equal 0. So what we need are the slopes. I need the value of slope over here in structure 1 and in structure 2. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw the deflected shape. We've got a beam that's going to bend. All right, zero deflection, zero slope at the wall. We've got negative moment. The load is pushing down. And then we end up with a straight line beam after 10 feet. Out here we have zero moment in the beam over those last 10 feet. Let's look at the deflection in structure two. We've got an applied moment at the end, so it's going to cause the beam to curl up. And so I need to compare these two values. That would be the slope in structure one at the end, and that would be the slope in structure two at the end. So let's use our deflection table to go ahead and help us here. So let's look at the cantilever section and a distributed load. Here would be, it's a case two example. And right here we've got a slope at the end. And again, notice how the end is defined as where the distributed load stops. What we've got on our beam is an extension past there. Uh, so what we're gonna be able to do is calculate things that are occurring right at the end of the distributed load. So if we go back up to our picture, one. So if we can find the slope right here, the answer for slope there is going to be the same because that is a straight line all the way out of there. So we would have that the slope in structure one at 20 is equal to the slope in structure one at 10, which is going to be equal to minus WL to the third over six. EI. Now let's go ahead and look at that one more time down here. There's the WL to the third over 6 EI for our beam. The slope is down, so we're going to use negative. So for this calculation, we end up with minus 2 kip per feet over 10 feet, right? The length of the distributed load to the third over 6 EI. So the slope at the other one, we have got case three from the table. Let's go take a look at a cantilever with an applied moment at the end. Here we've got a slope at the end that's going to have a magnitude of ML over EI. And I'm going to determine whether it's plus or minus by the deflected shape. So let's go back up here. All right, we drew the deflected shape already. We see that we have a positive slope at the end. So the 
derivative or the slope at 20 is going to equal plus ml over ei. And so we plug in what we know. That's going to be plus m 20 feet, dealing with a beam that's 20 feet long. And really, it's 20 feet from the wall to where the applied moment is. And over ei. So let's go ahead and just plug all that in. I'm going to take that expression and rewrite it below. And so I end up with, that's my equation that has to be true in, determine, in a, um, superposition. Right? We know that that's going to be equal to 0. And so we'll just plug in the values. That equals 0. We do a little bit of math on it. And we end up with an answer for m of 100 over 6, or 16.7 kip feet.